In this video, I'll be showing you how to do a leak or a pressure test on a two-stroke engine. Specifically, I'll be working with a scooter engine, but it should be a pretty similar process for about any two-stroke that you want to work on. Pressure testing is done to find air leaks in two-stroke engines. And it's important to find an air leak if you have it, because it can cause you all sorts of issues. It can be a serious issue, like perhaps you could burn a hole in a piston or at least soft seize if you've got an air leak causing a lean condition. And it could be something that's more of just a hassle. Like, for example, you're trying to find the right main jet for your carburetor and you just can't get it dialed in no matter what you try. It can be a real headache because if you've got an air leak, you, you kind of get fluctuations in the tune and ne it will never seem right. Or maybe it's right one day and the next day it's off, even though conditions didn't really change. Air leaks can cause all sorts of problems like that, as well as just drivability, idle issues, things like that. So it's a good idea to check any time you do anything that could affect sealing or if you just suspect an issue with it. So for example, if I put a big bore kit on or I build a fresh engine from scratch, change intake gaskets, change seals, any of the, anything I do that's going to affect sealing of the engine, then I like to do a leak or a pressure test. Some people think, well, I put new seals in or I put brand new gaskets in or something like that, then it's got to seal, but that's not the case. You can put in brand new parts and it doesn't always seal. So it's a good idea to check just to make sure so you don't have a bunch of headaches down the road. So with all that said, let's take a look at what's involved in pressure testing your engine. So when you do a pressure test, essentially what you're going to do is seal up the inlet and the exhaust. In this case, the spark plugs out. Just make sure there's nowhere that air can escape from the engine. And then you're going to pump in pressure and monitor that pressure to make sure the air or the pressure is actually staying in there. You don't want any pressure bleeding off. If pressure is bleeding off, then you don't have a sealed system. And by doing the pressure test, that will give you a way to also find where it is, which I'll show you later. So basically, all we're going to try to do is seal everything off and introduce pressure to the engine and then just watch and see what happens with that pressure if it stays in there or if it leaks out. So it's a pretty simple concept and the execution of it is not difficult either which I'm about to show you. You can go out and buy pressure testing kits for two strokes. I believe Motion Pro and some other companies make them and some of them are fairly expensive. Uh, I know some I've seen for around a hundred dollars or more and that's really not necessary because you can make something yourself for a very small amount of money. So I've got a selection of stuff here to show you just some of the components that may be in your pressure testing or leak testing kit. You don't have to have all of this stuff. This is just multiple examples of certain things. In reality, your pressure testing kit can be pretty simple. Essentially, you need a way to seal the engine off, seal the intake, and seal the exhaust, and some way to introduce pressure into the engine and then a way to monitor that pressure. What you're looking at here from this pump bulb to this end here is most of the pressure testing system that I actually use. So what I've got on this end is I have a bulb, a pump for a blood pressure system. I think they call it a Sphygmo manometer or something like that if you wanted to look that up. But it's just the pump bulb from a blood pressure cuff. And that also has a uh, little valve here. You can loosen it up to release pressure in the system if you want to. Or keep it tight so that you can pump air in and it's all sealed off. That has a barb which connects to a hose. The piece of hose runs to a barb that's in this brass T-fitting. On the other end, obviously, I've got another hose which right now is connected to nothing but that will connect to the engine and in the center here you can see I've attached a gauge. The gauge that I'm using measures from 0 to 15 psi and it was just a cheap gauge that I found on I think eBay or Amazon or something like that it cost me maybe five to ten dollars max. Um, all you really need is a gauge that goes to about maybe seven psi but most of the time you'll probably find something that goes to 10 or 15 PSI. I wouldn't go and get a really high measuring gauge because if you had this go to from say 0 to 100, the uh, accuracy of trying to watch small increments like 1 PSI 
is a little worse, so you're actually better off with something like this that goes to 10 or 15 PSI. And all of these, I believe, were 8th inch NPT fittings. So this is an 8th inch NPT to quarter inch hose barb. Same thing over here. The gauge is 8th inch NPT, and this is just an 8th inch NPT T. So all that stuff you can buy in a hardware store. You can see I'm using different hose on either side, and it really doesn't matter. I initially, when I first built this thing, I started off with this heavy duty hose. And then I found out that I actually didn't need hose that was that heavy duty just for 5 to 7 PSI. So I started using actually what over here is fuel line, which has worked just fine for me. Uh, just quarter inch inside diameter fuel line. Again, matches up to my quarter inch fittings here. So here I've got multiple examples of adapters to connect the assembly that I just showed you, consisting of the gauge, the pump, and the hoses, to the engine. And these three are the type that I would use the most. All of these attach to the intake manifold. Here are two different adapters that I just showed you. And you can see that they're different sizes when I put them up close to each other. And the reason for that is because you can make these to fit different intakes. So in this case, I want to seal this stock intake. This is one of the ones, the adapters that I use when I have a large intake and it clearly does, would not fit in there. It's too large. But this one is made just for the stock size intake. And so I would press that in, just like I'm inserting a carburetor or something, or a tube, and then clamp that down, again, just like I'm clamping down a carburetor. As you can see, it's got this barb installed in the adapter, and that is so I can attach my gauge and pump setup. And all I really have to do is slip the hose over that, and then that will give me a way to pump air or pressure into the engine. Intake adapters like that can be made very easily. So this one I actually made in a lathe and cut it to exactly the size that I wanted it to and then tapped it and installed a hose barb. And that's just a brass barb that you can get from any hardware or home improvement store. But it really doesn't have to be that fancy or uh, that time consuming to make one. These two are very cheap and fast to make, and the parts are easy to find. Any kind of hardware store with a plumbing section or home improvement store should have enough parts for you to make some kind of adapter for your intake. So in this case, they're both PVC caps of some sort, and I just found ones that would actually fit into my intake well. These were threaded. I couldn't find anything better at the store that I was in at the time. So I just ground the threads off so that I had a smooth surface and it made it better to seal. But most of the time you can actually find something that doesn't even have threads that is a good fit into your intake. You can see this one's a little larger, just the same basic idea, just a larger version of it. Once you get something that fits in PVC, then all I did was just to drill a hole through the top of it, tap it for 8th inch NPT, and then install a hose barb that had an eighth inch NPT thread with a quarter inch barb. And you could, you could use whatever size you wanted. It doesn't have to be eighth inch NPT. If you want to use huge hoses, you can. There's just really no point. Quarter inch hoses will do just fine. And the eighth inch NPT has plenty of an opening to get all the air you need in there. And more or less just be creative when you're trying to put this kind of thing together because it doesn't have to be these specific adapters. It can be anything PVC or metal. You can make something yourself. It doesn't really matter. You just need something that goes into the intake, will seal up, like you can clamp down on it like I showed you, and that you can put a fitting in so that you can pump in pressure. If you did decide that you wanted to pump air in through the exhaust side, I have done that before, I believe, and I can't honestly remember why, but you would build something like this. This is just very simple, a piece of, I don't know if it's 3 16 or quarter inch aluminum. It's drilled to match the uh, bolt holes on my exhaust flange, and then I drilled and tapped it again for a hose barb and then that would just be sealed to the engine. You can see I had some kind of seal in here, uh, RTV, 
and I installed that just like I would install uh, a header basically. I just bolted this up to the exhaust flange and that would allow me to pump air or pressure in through the exhaust side and then the intake could just be sealed. This is the least common way to do it. It just ends up much easier usually to build one of these kinds of fittings and again these are very cheap to get these plumbing fittings. And here are a few examples of how you could seal off the exhaust port. Again, assuming that you're going to pump pressure in through the intake side, which is the most common way to do this. So if, you've got, if you're pumping pressure in through the intake side, then you just need the exhaust to be totally sealed off. This is probably the easiest one to do. And all this is is a piece of scrap rubber that I found somewhere. About a quarter inch thick. It doesn't need to be that thick, though. An eighth inch thick rubber or even thinner could do just fine and I just drilled it with the same bolt pattern or bolt spacing that the exhaust flange uses and then what you could do is put this right on top of your header and then bolt your pipe up with this there the header and the pipe will hold this into place once it's bolted on and it's all sealed up it shouldn't let any air escape or I've got a plate here that I made, which again is just matching my exhaust flange roughly. You can just trace a, a header, is the easy way to make one of these, and cut it out. This one's made of about 3 16 inch thick aluminum. You can make it out of steel. What I like to do is actually to combine this rubber gasket and this plate, and I'll just put these together and use this plate to bolt this uh, this rubber gasket to my exhaust manifold and that holds it on there nice and secure and I usually don't have any trouble with that but again you don't have to have both of these I do this kind of stuff a lot so I actually like this little setup as a quick and easy way just to get it all together and seal it up the leftover RTV on this plate will probably clue you into the other way that I've used this before which is simply to coat it with sealant and then bolt it up to the exhaust flange. That usually seals just fine. The major drawback to that one is that you have to wait for it. So you can't just put the sealant on, bolt it up, and then it immediately seals usually. You generally have to wait for that to cure, so that takes time. Whereas something like this rubber, you can just bolt it up and it's ready to go most of the time. This is another common way that people seal up exhaust ports, and it is called an expansion plug. So basically you put this inside of the exhaust port, you push this up in the exhaust port with this rubber in there trying to make contact with the walls of the exhaust port. And then you tighten this nut down and as you tighten this nut it kind of squeezes that rubber and forces it to expand so that it will seal against the walls of the exhaust port. So you can seal up the port that way if you'd like. I personally find these a little harder to use and they have they are more uh, size specific so say a plate like this or just a rubber gasket I can pretty much use with any cylinder and any exhaust that I'm going to use with my Mitarelli engine and my scooter whereas if I build a hundred cc with a big exhaust port maybe this plug will fit but then if I've got a little 50 cc then this is too large so I've got to have a different plug and sometimes it can take a few different plugs to cover the range so that's what my test rig looks like, but yours doesn't have to be like mine. You can make it however works for you, whether that's just what you've got around or from personal preference. The important part is just to be creative and come up with something that'll work for you and your engine. Uh, just for more examples, this is part of a brake bleeding kit. Mine is actually just a vacuum pump, but they make these that do vacuum and pressure. So you could use something like this to pump pressure into your system. And some people actually do use vacuum to look for leaks. Personally, I prefer to use pressure, but you could use vacuum. Uh, another idea, some people will set theirs up with a Schrader valve, which is basically the same as your uh, valve stem on your wheels and tires. And then you can hook up like a bicycle pump to that and pump pressure in that way. Uh, some people also say that they hook up a Schrader valve and use an air compressor. But if you do that, make sure you regulate your pressure way down low to an appropriate value because you don't want to pump in, say, 50 PSI and then uh, blow the seals out of the engine or something like that. But, again, just come up with something that works for you. 
Hopefully by now you understand what a pressure or leak test is and you have a good idea of what it takes to put together a pressure or leak testing rig. But I also want to show you how to do a pressure or leak test. So I've got an engine behind me that I had done some work to and I actually do need to do a pressure test on it to look for some leaks. So let's take a look at that. Most people prefer to do a leak test with the engine or the piston set to bottom dead center. So if the piston is at the very bottom of its stroke, obviously it's going up and down in the cylinder. When it's at the bottom of the stroke, that's called bottom dead center. When it's at the top of the stroke, at the top of the cylinder, or the bore, that's top dead center. So all we're trying to do is set the piston so that it's at bottom dead center. To do this technically correct, if you wanted to set it to bottom dead center, you'd have to set up a degree wheel or something like that and go through a good bit of trouble to get it to exactly bottom dead center. For the purposes of a pressure or leak test, that is not necessary at all. We basically just need to make sure the piston is roughly at the bottom of its stroke. And just turn the engine over by hand, and you can watch this go in and out of the cylinder through the spark plug hole here, if I can get a hold of it. And then you can see here where I'm at the bottom of the travel, the bottom of the stroke, and I'll just leave it right there, roughly at bottom dead center. Now the engine's at bottom dead center. I'm not going to use this spark plug hole for anything else. I didn't mention it earlier, but you could actually introduce pressure here and unseal the intake and the exhaust. You have a lot of options. But usually what you'll do is just put the spark plug in, install that as normal, and that will seal up your spark plug hole, hopefully, as long as your threads and everything are good. So go ahead and just install your spark plug. The next thing that I'm going to do is to seal off the exhaust flange or the exhaust port. So in my case, I'm going to be using this rubber piece that I showed you earlier. I'm going to use this flange here. And I'm going to bolt that up essentially the same way I would bolt up an exhaust. And again, you could just put that rubber piece in between your exhaust header. Your exhaust header would basically replace this piece and bolt up your whole exhaust with that rubber in there and seal it that way. That's a very simple way to do it. But I just like to have this hole set up here that I can keep around and it goes on a little easier than the uh, entire exhaust. Now both of those are secure, so you can see the rubber is kind of being squeezed in between this plate here and my exhaust flange. So that should seal my exhaust. Now I'm going to install this adapter, just like I showed you before, into my intake. So again, I just find the adapter that fits and push that in. And then I will clamp that down, just like I'm clamping down a carburetor into the intake. Now my engine's set to bottom dead center. It's got a spark plug in here sealing the spark plug hole. I've got the exhaust hopefully sealed up. And I've got my adapter in my intake. So now all I need to do is attach my pump and gauge setup, which in this case is as simple as slipping the hose over the hose barb here. And you can use uh, hose clamps if you find it necessary. But if you got a decent fit with a hose and the uh, barb, you shouldn't even really need hose clamps for that. And that's pretty much your setup should be ready to go. You can never guarantee that all this stuff is sealed. You'll find out when you start testing. But hopefully all that stuff is sealed now and we can start looking for leaks. Now it's all set up and we're pretty much ready to start pumping and putting pressure into the engine. But before you start putting pressure into the engine, you need to make sure you know exactly how much pressure you want to use. So I always work in PSI, and I go with 6 PSI usually. Say so stick with 5 to 7 PSI. You don't want to exceed that because you could actually push seals out or cause other damage to parts. So try to stick to right around 6 PSI, 5 to 7 we'll say. And if you're not working with PSI, maybe you're working with bar. I believe that is about 0.35 to 0.5 bar. Or if you happen to get one of those uh, sphygmomanometers, the blood pressure cuff, 
that comes with a uh, uh, gauge on it. A lot of times those will come with gauges that are millimeters of mercury. It'll look like uh, MM for millimeter and then HG, the symbol for mercury. And if you're using one of those, then you'll want to stick with about 250 to 300 millimeters of mercury. So again, 5 to 7 PSI is what most of us are probably be working with. That's what you want to pump it up to. So you'll start pumping it up and hopefully you'll see this gauge go up and then you'll want to stop when you get to your target. So I'm pumping it up. You can see my gauge starts rising. But I can already see I've got a problem because my gauge is falling. Here's a better look at what's going on on the gauge. I'm pumping it up. And what we're hoping to see would be if I stopped that that gauge needle would stay still. But you can see here that the gauge needle is falling down. And that is falling down quite quickly. So what that's telling me is that I actually have a large leak somewhere here. It could be the engine. It could be in the pressure test rig. That's what we've got to figure out. There it goes again. You can see it's falling very, very quickly. And what we want is for it to stay still. Whenever you have a leak, you're going to need one more thing, and that is basically some sort of water and soap solution. A lot of people use uh, dish soap and water. Just put it in a spray bottle like this. I kind of use whatever I have around. Uh, this is uh, some kind of, I believe it's simple green and water, and that works fine for me. But again, dish soap and water is probably the more popular choice. And what you're going to do with that is spray it around anywhere that there is a potential for a leak. There are all sorts of places that a two-stroke can leak. So it could be the intake, could be your connection right here with your test rig. It actually could be anywhere in your test rig. So maybe there's a leak at this hose barb here, or maybe here, or maybe it's leaking before your gauge, or maybe where you've connected your pump. Any of that stuff could leak. It could be the intake or reed gaskets here. It could be your base gasket. Could be the head gasket. This is actually liquid cooled so you can't really see where the head gasket itself is. But it could be the head gasket there between the cylinder and the head. You can actually have leaks out of spark plug. You can even have leaks coming through the uh, cylinder studs, the cylinder stud passages. It can be the exhaust flange is not sealed properly. It could be the crankshaft seals. In this case, there's a seal here that would normally be behind the variator. There's one on the other side of the engine that is usually behind the flywheel and the stator. You could also get a leak right on the seam where the cases meet. And if you've done a lot of modifications to the engine, like this one that I have, I have filler here because I did some severe porting, we call it trench work, to these cases. So you could actually have the filler can leak. I've had that before and that can be kind of a pain to deal with, but that's another possibility. So basically you want to use your soapy water solution and start spraying anywhere that you suspect a leak is. Starting with the uh, most common culprits first and then working your way to what you believe would be the least common or the least likely place for it to leak. So the first place I'm going to check is right here where the uh, adapter goes into the intake. So what I'm going to do is just spray some of this soap and water solution around there. Then I'm going to go ahead and start pumping up my uh, test rig here and watch for bubbles. And sometimes you may need to pump it up and then spray a little more just to make sure you're not missing something. So right now I'm not seeing anything bubble up anymore. Obviously you can see it's kind of foaming, but that's not. You'll actually be able to see the bubbles kind of pushing outward here if there's a leak there. So that's not my issue right now. And then the second place I normally look is this exhaust area here to see if this is sealed. So again, I'm going to spray my soapy water solution all around there on the edges. And then I'll pump this up and watch for any air escaping there. And right now 
I'm not seeing anything there. Now I've just checked the two spots that are very common for me that I usually see leaks where I set up my tester if I don't have something clamped right. After that, it's kind of a crapshoot. It could go either way of exactly what may be leaking. So I just kind of work my way around and start spraying things with a soapy water and find out if I see any air bubbles. So I'll go ahead and spray this crank seal, pump that up, and I'm seeing air bubbles. So I've definitely got a leak on my crank seal. Let me get you a good better look at that. Okay, so here's that close up. Let me spray some more soap and water on there and I'll go ahead and pump it up and you see the air bubbles should be pretty easy to see right over here they're just streaming out of that crank seal so I definitely know I've got a bad crank seal here I've got a leak at the crank seal so now my next step will be I'm gonna have to replace this crank seal and then retry my test I can leave all this other stuff hooked up but I just need to get this crank seal replaced and then I can start my test over again and see if this still leaks. I've just replaced the seal, so I'm going to go ahead and Spray some of my solution right around that seal and then pump up the test rig and see what happens this time. You can see I've still got a very quick pressure drop, but it doesn't look like anything is coming out of this seal. So I've eliminated one issue. And that's one lesson here, is that you're not necessarily looking for one leak, you're trying to find all leaks, and sometimes it is multiple things. So now, since I don't have any bubbles coming out of this seal, it should be good. And there is a possibility with something like this that once it will hold pressure, that then things that you couldn't find leaking before, you can see leaking. But anyway, this one, for now, we're going to suspect to be good, and we're going to have to go and find where the other leak is or other leaks my next suspicion is the crank seal on the other side of the engine so i'm going to go ahead and do the same kind of thing for it spray it with some soap and water and then i'll pump this up and see if we get any bubbles here right now i'm not seeing anything but a lot of my soapy water has already kind of came off let me just spray it again while i got some pressure in there not seeing anything right now in that area. So now I'm going to spray around all of my intake and reed gaskets and the bolts for those. And again, I'm not seeing anything here. But I've still got that quick pressure drop on my gauge. So we'll keep searching and the next place I'm going to look is right around the base gasket here at the base of the cylinder where the cylinder meets the cases. Same thing. Spray it with soapy water all the way around and then pump it up and see if you can see any bubbles. Not seeing anything on this side and I'm not seeing anything there either. So now I'm going to move on to the spark plug and the head studs, the cylinder studs. I'm just going to spray around those and make sure nothing's leaking through those areas. And not seeing any bubbles there either. Now I'm going to try to test the seam between the two case halves. You may have to kind of go a little at a time, just spray the area that you can actually see and then pump that up. I'll continue the same process. I'm just 
spun it around some to make sure I can get a good look at where they meet around the front. And I'll do the same thing there. And again, I don't see anything there. If this were an air-cooled engine, then I would be checking the head gasket. I actually would have checked the head gasket before now. But, being that this is a liquid-cooled engine, if I can get you a good look here, we've got a seal here, but this is not the actual pressure seal for the cylinder and the cylinder head. This is a seal for the water jackets and the cylinder head. So this won't actually tell us if we've got a leak from the cylinder head. So basically what it comes down to with the liquid cooled engine like this is test every other possibility and if you can't find anything else it's probably going to be your head gasket. I mean I suppose you could try to go in through a port with uh, like a borescope or something like that spray some fluid in there and put some light through there and just see if you can see any bubbles around there but generally if everything else checks out you've been very thorough then you'll assume it's a head gasket but at this point we haven't checked every single possibility so I'm gonna keep going and the next thing I'm gonna do is to check these areas that I have filled when I was doing a bunch of porting so again, hopefully you can see I've got a whole bunch of JB Weld here, and that's all filler from when I was doing some porting on the cases, some trench work. So I'm just going to soak this area because sometimes that will develop leaks. Actually, it almost looks like I've got a crack down here, but we will find out here. So go ahead and pump this up. Oh, sure. You can see I've got a lot of bubbles coming out of there, out of this top bolt area. So here's a little closer look at that. Spray it one more time for you. And you can see tons of bubbles coming out of there. That's definitely a big leak. Perhaps you can see there is a crack that runs all the way up here and goes down there toward the bolt. So this big chunk of filler here, JB Weld, has cracked. Basically, I'm going to have to go in there and grind this stuff out and then reapply new JB Weld and then get back to my pressure testing, my leak testing. Now I've done my repairs to this area. I'm hoping it's sealed. Only one way to find out here. Let's pump it back up and see what happens. That's already looking better. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get it up to about 6 PSI. And I've got a leak, but it's not as fast as it was before at least but that's still not good at all. So I'm gonna have to go around and figure out what's leaking now, and it could still be this. And sure enough, so I filled kinda of up and down the center toward this side, but the leak itself is actually coming out of the very corner here of the sealant where I didn't touch. So, I get to dig some more stuff out, do a little more filling, and then we'll be right back to here trying to test for leaks again in a little bit. And what I ended up finding is that I actually have a crack in the engine case. Hopefully you can see it on the camera, but it goes right along here. And that meets up right with that corner of the filler. But I found out that the case is cracked going through here and to the point that it didn't really make any sense to try to salvage it so I'm just replacing the entire case half so bought another case half from a, a 90cc ATV and I've already got that filled and got that ported and everything in there so pretty much now I just gotta get all this stuff back together
got the engine all back together now. New case half, top end together, etc. All ready to go, start pressure testing again. So I've got it right around 6 PSI and it seems to want to slowly leak at this point. So again, I've got pressure in here. And I'm going to start spraying just to see if I can find anything bubbling. So again, I'm starting right now with my uh, intake adapter just to make sure it's not that. And I'll go ahead and show you at this point while I'm at it. You can spray down your gauge setup. Oh, and actually, hopefully you can see right here I got bubbles coming out of the hose attached to my gauge. So all I did was just put a hose clamp on there. I'm going to go ahead and pump it back up. See if that fixes it. There's about 6 PSI. Check all the way around. And I'm not seeing a leak there. And actually, it appears that my gauge is staying pretty steady, which is what we want. Hopefully they're both clear. Got my pressure gauge here, and got a phone just running a timer for 30 minutes. What I'm hoping to see is that this gauge does not move for that 30 minute timer. Again, there are some people that say like 1 PSI over 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever the case may be. I really like to see no movement of this gauge for a full 30 minutes. So for right now, let's just watch this, see what happens. So, just to the naked eye, I believe that has crept down a hair, uh, maybe a couple tenths of a PSI. So at this point it just really becomes how much are you set on having that set still. That really doesn't worry me, but I would actually like to see it just sit still. So from this point on you can kind of go on and continue testing if you'd like, or you can call it good here. I think I'm at least going to take a look around with spray and just see if I can find anything else. So I've sprayed the engine down and I still can't find any sort of leak. I don't see bubbles coming from intake, cylinder, cases, the tester itself, nothing. So at this point, being liquid cooled, I am suspicious of the head gasket seal, or actually in my case it's not a gasket but a sealant, but the seal from the, the head and the uh, cylinder mating surface. And the other thing I'm suspicious of is my gauge, simply because I recently replaced it and I have seen it do some kind of funky things. And it may be a case of perhaps I shouldn't have bought the cheapest gauge that I could get when I replaced it. So I'm going to do a test to find out if my gauge is leaking. What I'd like to do is test my actual tester. And that's pretty simple. All I've done is I've removed this intake adapter and I have replaced it with a brass rod that I had that fits nicely in this quarter inch hose. It doesn't have to be brass rod. Whatever you can find to block it off, a bolt is probably the most common thing to have around. I just use the brass rod because it's nice and smooth. So that will allow me to test the rig itself without anything else. So what I'll do is I'll pump this up, I'll spray just to make sure I don't have a leak here that I can see, and then I'll do the same test that I showed you, putting it next to a timer. That's close enough for me, so it is just a hair over 6 PSI. I'm going to go ahead, before I do anything else, and spray everything and make sure I don't see any leaks right now.
Okay, I don't see any leaks. So right now my gauge is set right about 6 PSI. From my angle right now, it looks like it's just a hair below 6. Got it set up next to my timer, as you can see. Just going to do the same thing that I did with the engine. I'm going to let this timer run and see where this gauge is at the end of the 30 minutes. Clearly that's dropped quite a bit. It was around 6 PSI and now it looks like we are just over 4 PSI. So I've lost almost 2 pounds of pressure in there in 30 minutes. So that's kind of confirming my suspicion that this gauge is not very good. Um, so what I'm going to do, just because the only thing I think would be at risk is the gauge itself, I'm just going to pump this thing up to a little higher pressure and see if I can make anything start leaking. It's getting kind of tough just to pump it up there at this point with this little ball there it goes all right so we're maxed out we're over 15 psi on the gauge so if anything's gonna leak visibly it should do it now I'm just gonna spray my connections again see what happens again I got nothing here at my T around my hoses there Move down to the uh, bulb itself. Don't see anything leaking there. Now down to the other end. Like this. And again, I don't see anything leaking. So, since nothing else is leaking and it's clearly losing pressure, then I pretty much have to assume that this gauge is bad. At this point, I believe the gauge is the issue why I can't get a zero loss across my test because I can't even test the gauge by itself and get a zero loss. In fact, it lost even more that time, so I think it's very inconsistent. Um, just for fun, though, I bought this little uh, USB wire camera, they call it, years ago. Uh, little inspection camera. Super cheap, I think like 10 bucks. So it doesn't do a whole lot, but just for fun, I think I'm just going to try and look inside the uh, cylinder area and just see if I can see anything leaking around the head gasket probably won't work but let's take a look so essentially all I'm doing is taking this little scope with a light I'm gonna put it in right here where the thermostat would normally go and try to look down onto the seal from the cylinder to the head and I've already tried this one and I really can't even get in there to see anything so this is basically my only shot if this is gonna work so there's a look at what you can see on my screen. You can just barely make out that that's the engine, I think. Again, this is like a $10 camera from probably five years ago, so it's really low quality. But we'll just see what we can see. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in here and here. I believe this one that we're more focused on at the moment would be our ceiling surface because I think I can see my uh, RTV kind of spilling out of there, and that kind of looks like aluminum meeting up with cast. So at least we can get a look at that. Now the thing is, can we get some moisture in there, pump up the pressure tester, and just make sure we don't see any bubbles. So I've got my tester set up. It's around 6 PSI. I'm going to spray some moisture in here. And then we'll see if we can see anything bubbling. Yeah, so that's the cast cylinder and then the line for the aluminum. So again, this is the cast and that's the aluminum area of the head and I can see the mating surface I can see that it's wet from all the reflection but I don't see any bubbles moving I've pretty well exhausted my options at this point trying to get that perfect test and my opinion is that it's not going to happen without replacing my pressure gauge that said I'm not calling the, uh, the test that I just showed you with the inspection camera conclusive by any means because as you can see it's a pretty blurry picture and I can really only see the top of the cylinder but when you take everything else into account and then the fact that the gauge itself won't hold pressure over 30 minutes and actually had more of a loss than when I did the engine by itself I'm pretty confident saying that my engine is just fine 
and it's the gauge that needs to be replaced. As much as I'd like to show you that uh, zero loss test over 30 minutes, I don't think I'm going to bother for this video. Um, I've already kind of drug it out for probably about two weeks or so with me getting parts for it and so on. And I feel like that's long enough and I don't really think there's anything to gain from that because I believe that by now you should certainly have the idea of what it takes to do a pressure leak test, how to build the tool, a lot of the things that can go wrong, and so on. And that was the main point of this video was not to really just to show you my pressure test but actually to show you how to do a pressure test, what it's all about. Uh, I've had people tell me in the past that sometimes my videos make things look too easy. Don't think that's going to be the case here. This has been one of the hardest pressure tests I've ever done as far as getting the engine to seal up because of the cracked engine, the seals leaking, now my gauge is bad. It's problem one problem after another. So this is a real world example. Please don't let you scare that please don't let that scare you off because this is not how it typically typically goes. Most of the time you're probably going to hook up your pressure tester, pump it up. You might have like a seal maybe the gauge leaks, maybe a gasket leaks. It'll, usually it's something small. Sometimes you'll hook it up and find that it's perfect right from the get-go. It's not normally going to be like this, so don't let that scare you off. But the other side of that is, even if it is like this, you'd rather know this stuff now before you're on the road breaking down somewhere, blowing up parts, you know, burning holes in pistons and all that stuff. So it's better to find out before you get going down the road and whatnot. With all that said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope maybe you've learned something from the video. And if you have, please like it, share it, and subscribe for more. And thank you for watching.